All right, welcome to the new year. I am out driving, so I wanted to get a quick podcast in. Everyone's on the new year, new me. Uh, I'm here to tell you, you're you're still you. Um, you're just making different decisions. You're you're making a hopefully a concerted and a committed effort to be a better version of yourself. But you're still you. And check this out. That's okay. The big thing that I want to talk about is some of the things that I have gone through in 2022. And what I am going to talk about today is the idea of going to war. Going to war. Recently, um, I, you know, I got, I got kind of mad at uh, a situation, and you know, I felt my. I felt my uh, inner lion, my inner tiger, whatever it is. I felt it start rearing its ugly head. It was, it was, it was starting to, you know. And, and I was like, man, I'm I'm ready to go to war. I cannot believe that this is happening. And the thing that the thing that I realized is war can mean so many different things. So. Um, you know, we're going to come back to that story on what I have decided to do in that situation and what war means to me now, because recently as I've been working out and, you know, I'll tell you, it feels really good to have health be a priority already. It's the new year and I'm making zero different decisions about what I'm doing from a working out or a health perspective because I am committed, I'm consistent, I have the habits now, very excited. So I don't have to change anything. I'm like, it's, it's kind of business as usual, but watching everybody do the, oh man, new year, new me, new year, new me. Um, but as I get into the mindset of where I want to go attack, because sometimes I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't want to listen to an audiobook when I'm working out. Sometimes I need a little bit of motivation. I need to, just a little extra push of, hey, Greg, have you uh, heard this song that, you know, can maybe get you going a little bit? And I recently found this song c- called Welcome to the War by Seven Kings. And so m- I like this song so much. It gets me into the mindset so much that to be honest with you, I listen to it before every single workout. Now to be, you know, transparent, I'd say probably about 15, 20 minutes into my workout, I'm in such a zone. I will actually switch back to an audiobook and go into um, that because by that point I'm, I'm, I'm on autopilot and I'm just banging it out. And it, I could be listening to classical music. I could be listening to the ocean birds chirping, doesn't matter. I'm going to kick the gym's butt. But you know, sometimes I need the nudge. But I really like this song, Welcome to the War, because it just like, you're going into battle and it kind of has that. But it it has this aggressive undertone. And so I was thinking about this and I was just like, you know what, I'm working on the Purple Explosion 2 album right now, which I'm also thinking about maybe changing the color because, you know, we've incorporated, you know, TFP uh, Life, which is green, TFP Red, which is, well, red. Um, And so, you know, maybe there's the red explosion. Maybe there's the green explosion. I'm not really sure on that yet. We will see. But let's go back to this word war. I'm going to war. I'm going to war. I had a podcast recently where I was talking about the difference between going to battle versus going on an adventure. And I really, really like that podcast because, quite frankly, I would much rather go on an adventure ever, ever, than go, on, than, than go into battle. B- battles are hard. You don't know if you're going to win. It's, you know, it's so aggressive, and it's not really who I am anymore. 
So when, when I used this word war, I said, what if war, what if war was an acronym? What if war was an acronym? If war was an acronym, what would that acronym be? What would that acronym be? And I came up with this. Wise actions repeated. Wise actions repeated. So if I'm going to go to war with someone, I want to identify the wisest actions that I can do in that moment. And I want to just play that on repeat. Now, this is important to understand because you can still be in a war or unfortunately maybe a battle, but remember the the statement of high emotion, low intelligence. High emotion, low intelligence. And when I noticed myself getting emotional with this word, emotional with this idea of war, I realized I was in the wrong situation. I was in the wrong mindset. I was not going to do myself any service. So where do I go from there? I have to identify the wisest actions appropriate to the situation and I have to leave them on repeat. Sometimes the wisest action is no response. Sometimes the wisest action is building yourself out so that you do not get put in that position again. Sometimes the wisest action is education. Sometimes the wisest action is communication. Sometimes the wisest action is compassion. Sometimes the wisest action really is just a full-on spanking. You know, sometimes, you know, you got to have the the lawyer send the email or you got to call the cops or you got to do whatever it is. You have to identify your wisest action where if you remove the story and you just look at the facts, you remove the story. What is the wisest action? If you were writing a book, what or if you were in a similar situation and you were coaching or mentoring your daughter or your son, what would you tell them to do? If they came to you and you didn't know the parties involved, you just knew the circumstance, the situation, the things that had happened, the history, what would you tell them to do? Take those wise actions and put them on repeat. And that's the thing. You never make a decision on a high and you never make a decision in a low. So you never make a decision from the peak. That's where hubris comes from. And you never make a decision from the valley. And this is the thing that I think is a really good, strong foundation to, to put into place in 2023. Because if you're going to go to war with yourself, if you're going to go to war with other people, if you're going to go to war and, and you, you use this kind of aggression, if you listen to uh, Tim Grover, the Relentless Books, I mean, he talks about using the dark side to your advantage. The problem is, is the dark, ch- the dark side left unchecked, the dark side not properly controlled will be your ruin, will be your ruin. That's really, really important to understand. So we've got to identify, okay, what is my best next step? What is the thing that I can do and then I need to repeat it. So if you're going to go to war on 2023, you know, instead of going and hitting the gym today for three hours, hit it for 30 minutes. And then tomorrow, 30 minutes. And the next day, 30 minutes. And the next day, 30 minutes. And the next day, 30 minutes. Are you getting it yet? Consistency really is the most important thing that you can understand. Now check this out. If you have not read the book, The Psychology of Money, you're missing out. Read the book, The Psychology of Money, The Psychology of Money, because it really illustrates how important 
the idea of patience is. How important the idea of the, I don't want to say the, the wait and see approach because you're still taking action, but the consistency approach. It's, it's patience and consistency. Deliberate like this. I know a lot of people are out there doing the ready, fire, aim approach, and there's nothing wrong with that as long as you're making small bets and taking small risks. But ready, fire, aim with everything you have all the time is going to lead to ruin. So the big thing is, is you got to get the ball into the hands of people who have had the ball before. You got to get on teams. You got to get on, uh, on and in a community. Okay. And this is the thing that, you know, I've been behind the scenes really trying to quantify because 2022 was eye opening for me in many areas. 2022, I basically took a sabbatical. I was a part of, realistically, I was a part of two other communities that were not my own because I was kind of in the process of restarting my community. And one worked out incredibly well and one didn't work out so much. Just, you know, and honestly, it was just philosophical differences and that's okay. But here's the thing. I should have been able to identify those philosophical differences far sooner than I did. But I thought I could either change the status quo or influence or, you know, I I found myself giving excuses to things that were being done, things that were being said, all because I wanted to stay a part of realistically the community. And then at some point I had to walk away. I recently in our private Facebook group, and if you're not a part of our our private Facebook group, just look up the final percent network on uh, on Facebook and you, you you can join and just when when it says you know do you agree to the terms where did you hear about the group just say hey you know I listen to Greg's podcast and we'll let you in the the big thing about the community is we just want to equip explore love on other people is that Is that crazy? Are we crazy for doing that? I think, you know, maybe some people think so. But come check out what that's all about. But the big thing about, and I've been saying this, I've been harping on this for probably the last few months. The cornerstone of any community is contribution. But you got to ask yourself, what are you contributing? And I, I often bring this back to, what are you contributing to your family? What are you contributing to your friendships? What are you contributing to your marriage? What are you contributing to yourself? These are really, really important questions that we want to be able to identify quickly because contribution, I think, might actually be the most beneficial thing for every single person involved. Now, why is that? Think about it. If you get, if someone walks up to you right now and you get $10 in a week, you probably won't remember that. You won't. I mean, probably, right? But if you give $10 to someone standing on a certain corner, every single time for the rest of your life, when you drive by that corner, you're going to remember the time that you gave $10 and you made someone stay. So not only did they go, oh my gosh, this is way more than $1, which is what they were asking, or maybe change, but you're going to remember what you did on that corner and it's going to fill you up every time you drive past it. Every time you remember that you made a difference. Every time that you made a difference. Contribution. You contributed to somebody's life. You know, why do I do this podcast? I want to contribute something to your life. There are people out there that I have probably never talked to that listen to my podcast. Now, please reach out and say, hey, join our Facebook group so that I can get to know you. I'd love to. But if all that happens is, you know, silently you put in some of these principles and your life's just a little bit better than it was before, worth it. Why? Because I'm contributing. 
It's extraordinarily important. Contribution. Contribution, I think, is everything. If you want to make a difference, a lot of people just want to be needed and necessary. Now, what does it take to be needed and necessary? You have to be a contributing factor to a community, to a destination, to a cause, to love, to change, a contributing factor to change. When you don't feel like you're making a difference, you contribute even less or not at all. And then you wonder, well, how come no one knows who I am? How come no one? And then you get into this weird cycle. I watch it happen in so many different quote unquote communities because they want everyone to come seek them out. And quite frankly, it's out of sight, out of mind. So going through 2020 and reflecting, I think a couple things is don't, when I say the genius is in the and, I really mean the genius is in the and, but it needs to be more of a between, not an among. I, I talked about this in our Facebook group the other day. You know, I'm not saying do this and this and this and this and this. Then you spread yourself way too thin. I'm saying when it's between, like when I, when I tell people, hey, look at whether or not you, if you don't believe the genius is in the end, would you rather, would you rather breathe in or out? Ah, well, in that case, I kind of need both. You can't just breathe out. You can't just breathe in. So check this out. Here's the, 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 the law at play here. You can't just take. And you can't just give. You know, in a lot of ways, 2022 was basically, I'm, I'm just giving. And, you know, like, it, it gets hard because then you're like, how come people aren't engaging? And, you know, full disclosure, we put, I think, over 70 hours of stuff into our app. And we still have people who are... When, when I give them a month for free or whatever, it's only 33 bucks. When I give them a month for free, they're like, ah, I don't, I don't want it. Or I'll give it to them for free and they will never log in. And it just, it begs the question, you know, when, when and how are people going to take action? Why, what makes people take action on certain things? And usually, unfortunately, humans are driven by pain. Or they're seeking pleasure, a dopamine hit. I'm here to tell you, if you can get driven by contribution, things start working themselves out, staying consistent on that. And so it's, it's very interesting, and you have to get the right people. So if people don't want to buy in, this is something that, you know, I, I actually think is very important for anybody out there who is in sales. Now, check this out. If you go, ah, oh, well, this doesn't apply to me. I'm not in sales. You're wrong because everybody is in sales. Every single person is selling something or buying something. When you're trying to get your kids to go down at night, you're selling them on the idea that it's time for bed. When you're trying to go on date night and one of you wants sushi and the other one wants a steakhouse, you're selling them on the idea that, you know, steak is better than fish or fish is better than steak, which that's one of the things I really do think that the genius is in the end. But here's, here's one thing that I've been helping other people with a lot. People are looking for something. And they're looking for what I call one of the four areas of coaching. Now, full disclosure, you need all four, but your focus is going to be in one of these areas. Starts in personal. And your personal beliefs are going to be usually, they, they started out getting installed by your family. They got installed by your family. That's your first community. This is your values, your principles, what's important to you, your work ethic, and that's going to influence how you do business. Now, that's the second area. So it goes from personal over to business. 
And how you do business, you might be a disgruntled employee, you might be a leader, you might be a follower, you might be an entrepreneur, you might be an intrapreneur. But then how you do business, the resources that you have, the uh, appreciation that you receive is going to turn into the vitality of your life. Now, the vitality of your life is going to happen, and that is, do you go to the gym to deal with stress, or do you go to the bar to deal with stress? Are you hanging out with the right people or the wrong people? Who do you let influence you? Are you trying to help people? Are you trying to hurt people? What is, what is your vernacular? What's the language, the tone that you set for your life? One of my New Year's resolutions, just so you know, I don't want to cuss anymore. I don't think, I think that I should and can be able to communicate all of my ideas without using curse words. Something I'm going to really work on. They pop out every now and then, sometimes far too often. But certainly having a young kid around and me wanting to set a different and a better example for my employees and the people that I am trying to lead, I would like to not curse. So that's going to change who I hang out with. People will feel a certain type of way if they curse in front of me. Not that I'm going to ridicule them, to be very clear, just they're going to know I don't use that language. Interesting, okay? So we've gone from personal, we go down to business, then we go up to vitality, and then who you hang around with and the vitality that you use, how you spend your time, your resources, is going to dictate your community. Now you're going to have a community. That's the fourth thing. The community that you surround yourself with is going to start changing your values again. It's going to start changing your principles. It's going to change you fundamentally to a level to where you become a different person. And then that is going to affect how you do business. And that is going to affect how your vitality shows up in your life. And then that is going to affect the community or people around you, the environment around you. And then that's going to come back to personal. So this figure eight thing starts up at the top left hand, comes down to the the bottom right hand, arrow comes up to the top right hand, and then down to the bottom left hand, and then an arrow goes back up to the top left hand. I hope I did that right. I'm driving. Might have just confused everybody, but no, there are four quadrants. So oftentimes, there's a lot of things where people are saying, hey, can you help me with business? Can you help me with mindset? Can you help me with health? Can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? Help, 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 help. I'm drowning. I'm, I need help. I'm drowning. They're screaming. Like, like I, I think her name's Rose, right? Rose and Jack, right, from Titanic. You know, someone's over here, help, I'm drowning, I'm drowning, I'm drowning, I'm drowning. And you get spotted. And you get a life jacket thrown to you. Here you go. And then what happens? I don't know if I want to wear this life jacket. This life jacket makes my butt look big. Wait, what? You just said you were drowning. Yeah, but where was this life jacket made? You just said you were drowning. It's a life jacket. And then you sit here and you try to talk people into putting a life jacket on. But here's the thing that I want to help you guys understand. The longer you try to talk someone into putting a life jacket on, there are 10, 20, 100, 1,000 other people that were begging for your help that had no problem putting on the life jacket. So if you know someone's drowning, they're screaming that they're drowning, you throw them a life jacket and then you get into this big argument about whether or not they should put it on, they're just not ready. Sales is all about sorting, it's not about convincing. So if you throw a life jacket to somebody and they're not ready to put it on, that's fine. Go get somebody else a life jacket and then somebody else a life jacket and then somebody else a life jacket, and then somebody else a life jacket. They need to be ready to put on a life jacket. Not all people who are drowning 
are going to be ready for the life jacket. And that's a hard thing because when we're in this industry of compassion and contribution and we want to see people win, we want to see people succeed, we want to see people help themselves, what tends to happen is we want to not give up on people. Certainly come back around and check in on somebody. But the other thing from a psychological standpoint that I want you to identify and understand is sometimes a salesperson is the only attention that somebody is getting and because they're insecure or they feel less than or they feel a lack of connection and you're giving them all this connection and they feel important, they will just keep you in that spot forever. Why? Because they want to feel important. They actually are never going to buy from you. They're never going to join the cause. They're never going to put on the life jacket. And the best thing you can do for them is you have to set your boundaries. Now check this out. Boundaries are things you will not tolerate. Flexibility are things you will tolerate. And people need to have more defined boundaries and more defined flexibility. So often, if it's Tuesday, the rules are different than Wednesday, are different than Thursday, are different than Friday. So of course you're getting very, results may vary. Underneath your life, it probably has that little asterisk, hey, results may vary. That's because you vary. So I'm not asking you to have these giant goals and, and stuff like that. I, I want you to have dreams, but I really believe in micro commitments to the macro goal. So inside of our Facebook group, we actually have this template that is a 100-day challenge. 100-day challenge. What does this mean? 100-day challenge is you will fill out 10 commitments that you have that are small. It could be five minutes of reading. It could be 10 minutes of writing a song, three minutes of playing guitar. I don't care what it is, but make them small. And then just do them every day for 100 days. And by the end of the 100 days, you're going to be, you're going to have this crazy thing called discipline and habits. But the biggest lie is people thinking that you need to wait for inspiration. What? Man, I used to be that person, man. I'm just not feeling it. <laughs> You know, because that, that happens all the time in, in, in musicians, right? I'm just not feeling it right now. You know, I've got writer's block. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so my question is, is have you ever seen a janitor have mop block? No, just do the, the work. Show up. Not all work is going to be good work, but you need to show up and you need to do the work. I imagine discipline and habits a little bit like a water filter. Have you ever put in a water filter? If you put in a water filter, like, and if you don't know this, I'm going to explain it to you because it's actually pretty interesting. You put in the water filter and you get clean water and then a bunch of dirty water and then some clean water and then dirty, 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 and then a ton of dirty water and then some clean water. And I was like, what? Because I, I thought you just put in the filter and then I'm just, let me just drink my water. And I, we did this in our fridge. I took the first thing. I'm like, wait, is this what our water has always looked like? No, 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 no. On the instructions, it says run about three gallons through the filter before it's pure. Because it has to, you know, hydrate and get all these different things on it and blah, 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 blah. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Creativity, discipline, habits, your life is the same thing. Once you start something, it's going to get dirty. You're not going to want to drink the water. There, it's going to be a crap song. It's going to be a crap idea. It's going to be a crap workout. It's going to be a crap run. That's okay. Do it again tomorrow. Might be a clean one. Then the next day it might be dirty. And then the next day it might be clean. But sooner or later, once you are disciplined, once you have that habit installed, then it's going to be automatic. And you're going to wake up and you're going to have a clean run. You're going to have a clean mind. You're going to have clean execution on things. Clean, 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 clean. And I always thought that that was an interesting way to look at creativity or discipline or habits 
because a lot of people will install a filter or i.e. read a book or buy, get a, a part of a community, take a course, take a public speaking course and they just think that their speech is going to be great. No, that's not how it works. Take a public speaking course and then go speak and check this out. Your speech might be crap. But then the next day, go speak again. The next day, go speak again. The next day, go speak again. What we're doing when we have these communities, we're installing a filter. But you have to buy in and and the more that you contribute into a community, contribute to yourself, contribute to an idea, the more you do these things, the more water you're running through the filter. So that what happens in that, in that situation? So that you can have pure thoughts, pure water, real results, expected results. So this is something that, you know, 2022, I ran a lot of water through a lot of different filters, but now my word is focus. It's time to cut everything down to about two, no more than three filters no more than three and then everything i'm going to do is going to be focused on those three pillars of me trying to change my stars if you've never watched the movie a knight's tale i i i think that's where the genesis of me becoming an entrepreneur and a motivational speaker i think this movie honestly is the genesis of where it came from because i'm gonna watch that movie today i love that movie I know Kayla would be down to watch it with me. But he says a man should be able to change his stars. And I'm telling you, all of us, we are able to change our stars. We're able to do it. We're able to do it. And if you can stay consistent, if you can stay disciplined, you can change your stars. You can change your stars. So I hope that this has helped. I wish you the freaking best in the in the new year. I love you each and every one of you and let's freaking rock and roll this this 2023. Does not that just sound weird to say? Like COVID hit, you know, almost 3 years ago. Doesn't I mean I guess it lasted a long time. I was gonna, I was going to say didn't doesn't it feel like it was just like yesterday <laughs> when we, when the world was shut down, but I mean I guess parts of the world still still are. So, you know, have grace have some freaking class, love on each other, love one another, stay consistent, install that filter, and you guys got this. You can do it. Thank you for listening to the Final Percent Podcast, and a Happy New Year. It's not-